Hi there and welcome to an update on the evolving situation in Iceland on the Reykjanes Peninsula. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Today is Thursday, March 7th. It's about 1 p.m. here Mountain Standard Time, 8 p.m. in Iceland. And I got a little bit of time between a lab I just finished up with some students and an orthodontic appointment for my son. So I thought I'd put together a little bit of an update, a little bit briefer maybe than what I normally like to do. But I will be, I do plan to do a live stream this Saturday, uh, March 9th at 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, which would be 5 p.m. UTC. So you can look for that. I'll get a, a link up soon today so you can look for that live stream update on Iceland and a few other things I have going on in my world. If you can join us, that would be great. Uh, if not, then that's okay too. You can always catch the recording. Uh, thanks as always to the viewers who helped make this community of geologic learners so great. Thanks for your suggestions, your viewership, comments, everything you do is, is much, much appreciated. So let's just get right to it. I think the main theme for today and going into this weekend is everyone kind of on pins and needles and the wait and see. Uh, we've been through this this circus before in Iceland with the GPS and seismic data showing similar trends to what we're seeing now. And I think we're at a point now with our estimates of the magma volume that's underneath the Svartsingi area that an eruption is likely or expected very soon. That being said, we could get a repeat of what happened last weekend, which was a magma intrusion, magma leaving the reservoir, intruding into another area to the east, but that not culminating in an eruption. So uh, let's get right to some of the data and we'll just discuss things as we can a little bit here. So starting with the Met Office update, as we often do. So this is from today, March 7th, a few hours ago. So there's still a high chance of an eruption and no surprises in this update, but it's still worth reviewing a bit here. So the volume of magma continues to increase. This could end with either a magma intrusion or an eruption. The eruption could take place very quickly with less than 30 minutes warning time. Uh, maybe contrary to what I've heard a little bit, I've heard chit chat, maybe it's my perception more than reality, um, but this will have earthquakes. So even though um, the weather's really bad in Iceland right now, there will be earthquakes that precede an eruption. So we will see some sort of seismic signal. The signal could last a very short amount of time, which is the Met Office is saying maybe less than 30 minutes. But as that magma makes its way to the surface, it will generate earthquakes. So we're not going to be completely blindsided this by this thing where everything's calm, no seismic data whatsoever, and then all of a sudden there's lava at the surface and the eruption has begun. I think that's a, a, a near, a very low probability. I'd put it very close to zero. Uh, location of the eruption, very close to the area between Stora Stogafell and Hagafelt. So just to give you a quick little uh, geography, spatial context there. So Blue Lagoon and the power plant are over here. Uh, the town of Grindavik sits in down here and the hill just northeast of Grindavik is Hagafelt, and then uh, right along this intrusion and where we've seen these last few eruptions take place, here's uh, Stora Stogafelt. So this zone is the most likely place for an eruption, but there's of course some other uh, options as well. It could, it could take place further to the south into town, which would be um, not the best outcome. Could be further north, which would be an ideal outcome because that would dissipate a lot of the lava in this fairly flat ground, carrying it further away from town would be good. Um, and so those are the most likely locations. We're not expecting the eruption to come up under the Blue Lagoon or the power plant over here at the older uh, Elbert crater system. Uh, we just we would need to see seismic signals and other indicators that the magma is moving in that direction. So for now, with all the data we have, this zone in here seems to be the most likely location for that. Um, let's see, continuing on with the update, uh, seismic activity has decreased since March 2nd, uh, especially in the last few days where a few earthquakes have been recorded. However, the weather has dampened or disturbed the seismometers, so there are probably more tremors, but all of these are small. And so they've had really uh, windy, stormy weather the last couple of days, and so that's definitely affecting our ability to uh, assess and record some of that seismic activity. 
The weather for the next 24 hours is likely to affect the monitoring system. There will be southeast winds, uh, you know, more stuff here about the weather, but basically uh, the weather is definitely going to be a factor in gathering all the seismic data that we would like to. Expansion under Svart Sengi and model calculations from the last few days show that about 1.2 million cubic meters of magma have been added to the magma chamber. So in total, there's more than 10 million cubic meters of magma. And basically, we're back to the volume of magma, give or take a bit, that we had prior to last Saturday when we had that intrusion. So we've, we've refilled the system with a new batch of magma and our volume is very similar to what we had prior to that intrusion. The question now becomes how much more magma is going to be needed to influx and intrude into the system before some of that magma becomes pressurized to the point that it uh, finds some pathway out to the surface and results in an eruption, or that it moves, finds some new pathway in the subsurface and possibly results in another intrusion event. Um, so the seismic data is very quiet. As you can see here uh, on the Reykjanes Peninsula, so just a few earthquakes over the last 24 hours. If we select that down to about 12 hours, you can see even fewer. And if we go down to six hours, it's pretty much nothing. But again, we feel reasonably certain that there are earthquakes happening, smaller earthquakes, but they're just not being picked up due to the weather conditions um, and the inability for the seismometers to catch those very small low magnitude quakes when there's uh, storms and other weather disturbances going on. A uh, couple other things in Iceland and there was a larger earthquake uh, over here underneath the Vatnajökull uh, ice cap in an area called Bardabunga. So this is an area that last erupted in 2014. It had fissure eruptions. There was a magnitude 3, almost a 3.2 earthquake uh, earlier today in that area at a very shallow depth, 0.135 kilometers. I haven't seen any news about this earthquake. I did look before I got on here. So it's possible that either this is a tectonic quake that's quite shallow, or possibly, I believe if I remember right, you can get earthquakes generated in the ice cap. So the glacier sitting above this volcano, uh, if that causes fracturing of the ice and, and movement, that dissipates out as, as seismic energy. But the very shallow depth of this earthquake is pretty interesting to look at. But nothing alarming, I would say, not a indicator of a volcanic episode in the making. You can see the main 3.1 earthquake there and then a couple nested smaller ones less than one in magnitude another one over here um, so just not a lot happening there and so I don't think it's anything magmatic or related to magma migration probably related to either tectonic stresses the weight of the ice cap on the rocks or maybe something in the glacier itself but uh, there might be questions from folks about that so I wanted to address that uh, and then not showing up on this graphic here, but yesterday uh, there was a little flurry of earthquakes down here at the southwest tip of the Reykjanes Peninsula where the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, this divergent plate boundary comes ashore. And this map from the Met Office shows the location of the, those quakes. In fact, a good chunk of these, this cluster of quakes yesterday were these ones down here at the southwest end of the peninsula. And again, I'll just reiterate based on my analysis and looking at those, nothing at all that suggests that it's related to volcanic processes. This is part of the active plate boundary um, and it looks to be tectonic in nature. And so nothing alarming there. But there was one quake that was about a three or so in that area. And then you can see the quakes just dropping down uh, dramatically possibly some pauses in the lousy weather that allowed a few more of these lower magnitude quakes to squeak through and get recorded. But mainly the, the absence of earthquakes here is largely due to uh, the stormy weather that they're having there right now. So um, let's look at the GPS data. I think there are some interesting trends here. So if we start with the Svartsengi station and we look at just the uplift data here over the last little bit, you can see that it looks like it's stalled a little bit. Like the, the there's a pretty steady rise in the elevation going up until the last couple of days where the trend seems to be 
uh, more or less leveling off a bit here based on what we see. And so that could that's it could be an indicator that we're, we're right at the precipice, like we think we are, of the next event, whether that event again is a intrusion of magma or actually an eruption at the surface. So there's the Svartsenghi station that we've spent some time with. If we look at the Blue Lagoon station, similar trend with it leveling off here the last couple of days in terms of upward movement of this GPS station. Interestingly, when we look at the the elevations preceding the February 8th eruption, we do see a similar trend, right? There's this, this maybe four, five, six day period where there just wasn't a lot of upward movement overall, net movement in, at this station. And are we starting to see the beginning of that? And will we see then this eruption uh, happen in the next couple days? So interesting there. And then the Elvert station shows a similar trend. So if you look at the recordings of the GPS station prior to the February 8th eruption, you can see steady inflation, uh, elevations moving up, but then, you know, we got like maybe 8, 10, 12 points here, a good three, four days worth of data where it levels off quite a bit. And that looks eerily similar in some, in broadly to what we're seeing here. Um, most recently, you can see there's this stagnation and stalling of the upward movement we've been seeing in the past at this station in that area. So um, I don't know if there's any other GPS stations that were particularly insightful, just looking at a couple of them there. Uh, again, haven't had a whole lot of time to hunker down and dig deep on the data. Uh, the Thorpeur data looks similar, so upward trend, and then it's kind of plateaued. It's kind of leveled off a little bit here. So I think everyone's more or less in agreement that we're, we're right at the right in the in the the sweet spot if you will in terms of an eruption is likely literally any time you know hours to possibly a few days if we get to you know early next week and we still haven't had any sort of magma movement out of the system um i'd be i'd be a bit surprised but it's possible we we just don't know the elastic limits of the rocks in the subsurface at this point we don't know how much this last magma intrusion which we think took place in this area here on Saturday. How much did that change the um, the crust in that area? How much did it change the pathways, the permeability architecture of the rocks? Is there more space now for the magma to kind of leak through? Uh, will it leak out of the magma reservoir into other areas where there's space or will the whole thing be pressurized because there's some sort of lid or cap on the system and then finally reach a breaking point in which the, the magma propagates outward and then maybe also upwards. Those are some of the big, big unknown questions. Uh, I've got a couple of papers. I'm trying to find some time to read. And when I get those digested, I want to share those with you as well. Uh, so we'll look forward to that soon. So last bit of news here with this kind of brief update comes from, uh, and this again, thanks to Amanda Joe for sending me some of the uh, the news out of Iceland. So this one talks about that the volume of magma at, uh, beneath the power plant region is now greater than it was before the intrusion last Saturday. Uh, so we still have the land moving upwards. We still have good indications that the, the magma is being fed into this shallow reservoir from a deeper source. Um, and, you know, where will this go? So yeah, so they're quantifying it at around 10 million cubic meters like we mentioned, but a little seismic activity because of because of the weather. So, um, so that's it. Kind of a brief update today. Apologize for the brevity. Uh, but I had labs and have a appointment for my son later today. So, just, but I wanted to get a little something out because my last update was on Monday, and I'll do the live stream on Saturday. And there'd been a few. You know, I, I knew there were people that were probably interested in seeing what had taken place over the last few days. So, that is our summary for today. Uh, we'll stay tuned to all the news and such in Iceland. Obviously, if something occurs, I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can and try to update you with as much information as I can. So thanks again for joining me. Thanks for viewing the program and make sure you give it thumbs up and subscribe and do all those great things to help promote geology education. And we'll see you next time. Take care.